So this is what we have last time. Uh, we're we're trying to compute the area of a under a curve, but above the x-axis. Sorry, where is it? So this kind of area here. In particular, we compute at a time uh, the graph of y uh, x squared, so square graph. Okay. So the question is, what is this, this area? How we compute area? Uh, the thing is, we don't have any, um, how we call it, uh, a formula for that kind of area. We have formulas for some regular stuff, but not uh, about this one. Okay. So the that's the say the philosophy of calculus say that if you cannot have the exact formula, then you may attempt some approximations. Okay. Uh, but not just arbitrary approximations, just guessing. Right? So it's based on some say some systematic uh, systematic say a systematic way to do approximations okay that means what are systematic approximations that means uh, you have to be able to improve the uh, the approximation so you would get a better approximations better means uh, a smaller error okay so you you have to be able to improve again and again to get a better, uh, to, to get a smaller uh, error. Okay, so this is how you do this one. Okay, so first approximations with this just big one here. Second approximations use this uh, two rectangles. Third approximation use this, uh, say, four rectangles. And uh, we just argue this uh, about the error just from the picture. Just showing you that the, the error is getting smaller. Okay. From the beginning, uh, this is the, the area is this big. But now it becomes this one after new step. Okay, so this one will disappear. Okay, so this in this sense that's the, the third export approximation is much better than the, the first so and keep going on and on. And we try to come up with a formula. Okay. Uh, but to come up with the formula, that's, that's easier if we do uh, just step by step, just divide to use one rectangle for the first approximation, two rectangles for the second approximation, third, uh, three rectangles for third approximation and so on, okay. So you can guess what the formula is. Okay. Now the, this is how to do this one. With one approximate, uh, one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles, four rectangles, right? And so you may guess what the formula is. So this, uh, interval of length one divided into n equal parts, just one over n. And the height, because there's a square, we have to square this one and sum them up together. Okay. And then we have this formula, the sum formula here. And you can plug in the number and then you end up with the, with this, uh, say, this one third. Okay. So that's basically the uh, the method that we that we will use. All right. So that's what we had last time. Let's start with the uh, some other things. Okay. Just uh, for the sake of notations. We call it sigma notations.
uh, we'll try to sum up a couple of things. Uh, just an example here. We're trying to sum up this number, just regular thing. Up to n, for example, right? So instead of writing this in a long, uh, a long series of uh, additions, we sum them up as this one here. Some uh, say some k. Oh, just say this uh, verbally. Some k from k from say from one to. Okay. So the notation for this is sum is sigma. So you know the, the this notation, sigma notation. So sigma is the capital of the. Uh, you, you know, from Greek letters, you have sigma here and sigma. So it's lower cap and uh, the large cap. cap. All right, so you sum up k, k from starting from one to n. So this sigma is the sum. Okay. All right, so um, also what we have we are summing squares. What to use, okay. So how to do this one? And we are summing squares. So we say, this is k squares, k from one to n. Okay, here is just a letter. So it does not matter from the letter that you use. It's like variable, okay? So it is the same as, say, you uh, would like to write k squared, for example, from k to n to Okay, so k and j here, just a, well, you may call it a dummy variable, okay? Uh, all right so let's um what's the properties of the uh the uh, sigma notations so for Okay, so for the sigma, uh, say, um, if you adding, say, a k plus b k, so say k from whatever, you can start with anything actually, uh, say from one, just one, and up to n. Uh, yeah, put that in inside parentheses. It's the same as you're taking the sum of each. And you add them together. And you can also say multiply the each of the uh, the terms okay. you can factor this out okay. all right so i forgot to mention that whatever here yeah. right so uh, this a k is the 
the term of summations, or sometimes you call it summands. Something that you sum. Okay. All right, so these two properties called linearity. Okay. And um, we can do also decompositions, for example. Um, so you're, you're adding uh, AK, for example. Well, let's split it into two parts, for example, from one till, say, K. The thing here is so J here is number which is less than n. Splitting. So splitting the summation to two parts. Or you can may do the how we call it the opposite of the splitting. That means the sum summing. So that's about the uh, sigma notations. All right, and there's some maybe useful formulas. First is, what if you're adding constant? So let's put J here. Uh, say this is uh, constant C. C here is constant. Right, so this just yeah, you're summing C plus C plus C plus whatever there. But this is uh, done, let's see how many times here. So from one to N. So this N times. Right? Right, this is just N times C. Okay. Second is the one that we uh, forget to name. This K is what we call index. Indices. Index indices. All right. So let's. Uh, at the k, for example. Right, so this is one plus two plus three up to n. Right? So this is the formula that the, what do you call? If you add them, uh, the outside part of the, so the summation, so one and n, so n plus one, you add the second, second outside, right? two and n. Uh, minus one, so you always get n minus one, and because you're grouping two by two, then group by two, then you only have half of the uh, of the number you you sum, and each each pair gives you n plus one. So that's the formula, and. You don't prove this, but if you square this one, you get something like n, n plus one, to n plus one over six. That you may um, prove this using induction. Okay. Prove the formula. 
And let's see. I forgot what the the cube, but it's um, it's not uh, easy to find such a um, such a formula. Okay. Okay. So example here. Um, we try to compute what is, um, say, k squared plus k subject to one to n. Okay. So how will you uh, compute this one? All right. So by linearity. You can say that we, we can split this uh, sum. A square. Okay. And some of the, the second terms, but you take out the, the two. Okay. And then it's just one. And this one, sorry. This just gives you what this formula. Okay, this just gives you uh, this one. And this just gives you just. Okay, you can simplify this one. All right? Okay, so for example, now if you um, Equations. Let me just show you the from the text. This sum notations. All right, so this is some notations, and you can do this also as subtractions. Let's see. All right, so this example one, for example, this one here. So you're asked to compute this one, this sigma here. Like given the data is the sum of the AI is 60, sum of BI is 11. This is from one to 100. So it's a long way if you write it around uh, completely in the, in the sequentially. Right, so let's do this one. We compute this one. Right. So uh, you sum this separately. Take the two, the, the, the constant out. You separate them, you come uh, three sums. And then you take the, the constant outside. There. Uh, this one, we know this should be 60. That's data tells you. The sigma bi is just uh, 11. And this is four, it's just four times 100. Okay, so this. All 
All right, so this is something that we call collapsing sum. What is collapsing sum? Because it will cancel, cancel it. A lot of terms will cancel out. Let me write down. Um, For example, this one here, uh, a k minus a k uh, minus one from k from say from two to ten. All right. So if we write this down, what you get here? So this a one minus a zero. A2 minus A1, A3 minus A2, dot. And the last thing is A n minus A n. Uh, so you see here, you have a lot of cancellations because, um, let's see. Um, this A1 cancel this one. This A2 cancel this one. This A3 cancel by the next one. Right? This A and minus one cancel by the previous one here. Okay. So at the end, you ha only have uh, this and there. The last two terms standing. Okay. So what is collapsing or a Sometimes we call it telescoping. Telescope. We call it telescoping some. Well, you know, the Epirus telescope is a uh, monocular. Uh, so let me, but you can pull this out and you have a retractable telescope and you can collapse them together you can we just see uh, what you call telescoping some just a telescope uh, monocular Let's see uh, how to do this one, for example. Okay. See K one M. There, okay. One that looks like this one, uh, simplify as much as possible. Okay, so how we do this one? Oh, well, let's try to simplify, not simplify the You may argue this is the simplest one, but we want to write down this possible one. Okay, plus B over K. Yeah, this is just make it plus. Doesn't matter, you know. Okay. So find first A and B. Okay. Uh, so we want to find A and B. In this case, uh, let's see what to do with this one. If you do fractions, then there's nothing you can do except do the common factor, common uh, denominators. Okay, so common denominators k, k plus one, so we use common k plus one. Okay. We'll use this quite often later on, we do this kind of trick. Okay, so what we get here? 
So you have uh, how many K you have? K, you have A and B. And for the constant, you just get A. Okay. And you try to, let's see, equalize them. Okay. So here A and there's no K here. So that means A and B must be zero. A plus B must be zero. And A must be one. Here you can come, you can conclude A equals one, B equals negative one. Okay. So in the end, you can simplify this by Splitting actually, not simplify. You may argue this is actually simpler. So, A equals one, so minus okay, and here. Uh, what do you have here, this one here? All right, so k equals one. Let's do uh, this, write this in long fashion. k equals one, so this is one minus, okay, so the first one. And the second give you, k equals two give you half one third, one third minus one fourth. Cut. Uh, before the end, you have n minus one there. Oh, actually, you have uh, something more. All right, so it equals n. You need cancellations. Let's cancel by So in the end, you have this scoping sum. One. Minus. So if we drag the problem further, compute this limit. Now this limit is kind of complicated because uh, it is the, the terms getting longer and longer. Okay, so this one is okay. right. So it's kind of limit. All right. Uh, but we know from here, from these computations, this is the limit of. And we know because this goes to zero. So this just goes to one. Okay, so this is the about the summations uh, notation. Okay. All right, so this is uh, some formula I mentioned. Uh, you're adding the number one, two, three up to n, then you have this formula. If you square, you have this formula, n, n plus one, two, n plus one over six. And if you have cubes, then you have this, n times n plus one over two, but you square. And for power four, you have this one. We only use this one. First two. Okay, so this is just an example of how to do this problem. Okay, questions? Let's become some. 
uh, uh, get back to the approximations again, but in, now we can use the sigma notations. Okay, so what is this? Let's redo this uh, problem. Uh, Okay, so let's do this one. Oh, sorry. All right. So let's do approximations. Approximate the area of the uh, under the curve uh, for T. T. From zero to three. Okay, so here. Okay, let's do this one. This uh, formulate. There the the graph of y equals there two plus one. E from zero to three. It's from here to here. Okay, let's do the approximations. Uh, if we approximate this one. <clears throat> right. Um, um, okay, let's divide this into an equal parts. So first step. Of course, the the uh, the the method is just use one rectangles, two three rectangles, four three rectangles, four rectangles, and so on. But we we now write this in more general. Write the, the nth approximations. Uh, spin of approximations. Okay. So the scheme is that uh, when we try to uh, divide the intervals, uh, to n equal parts, okay. and then we try to uh, the model this one here okay. model the k rectangle okay and then sum and then find formula right so this three steps Okay, so if we divide this so zero to three into nth rectangles, okay. 
So this is called the partitions. What is partitions? T0, T2. Right there. And at the end, you have Tn equals um, partitions. And we uh, take one rectangle. A rectangle. Oh, sorry. What I call a sample rectangle. Just take one of the three. All right, so uh, our sample rectangle. is this one. The width is just one of n. And the height is, let's see. Um, here we have, uh, this is T K, this is T K minus one. Okay, so for example, the, the height is just f of t k. Okay, so t k is, let's see, here if you um, divide the, part, the interval 0 to 3 into n equals parts, uh, the length of this each one, each of this is three over n. This is three over n. One because the length one, but this is length three. Okay. So this rectangle is of the uh, width three over n. And the height is f of tm, f of, say, uh, sorry, bk, a is so our function is just one fourth t uh, cube. So plus uh, plus one, yeah. Okay. So this is say the area of. Okay, so this is the first step. First step, okay. okay. This is the second step, the model. And the third step is taking some. This sample, this is what we call partition. Station sample sum. Okay. And sum, you write something like as the, the word says sum k from zero to n. Okay, so you get v over n. Okay. Like that. Sorry. This is some of AK, okay, which is, uh, let's give you, right? 
one fourth k over n. All right, so let's uh, do the, as long as long the, the sigma, sigma notation concern, that's, that's it, you, you, you're done with this one. But then you have to so, uh, simplify this one here, okay? So let's get rid of the uh, summation, okay? So what you can do to have? Uh, let's see. We're summing everything within uh, index k. Right? So this term does not include k. Does not contain k, right? So we can take this out. So what's left is just. Okay, let's do the, the simplest thing first. This is get one. You can split the sum, this and this. This just give you uh, how many terms in them. I guess this is start from, from one, not from zero. First approximation, second approximation, and so on. Okay, so this gives you uh, this n is the uh, same thing. Right? So we take one, four, n. So you have a cube. And so, okay, so what you get here? Okay, this one. And let's see this one here. Right. So, some of that. We'll check this. Yeah. Oh, where's the formula? I should give you the formula. This one. All right, can you see this one? So this we give you n n plus one over two that you square it. Okay, so it's just the sum of a square, but you square it. Just. No, sorry. Not square sum of linear thing so one plus two plus three plus four up to n so this is some that you square it okay so let's use this formula and that's give you n plus one over two and this give you just n Okay, uh, then that's the the, uh, the sum actually. Okay, so this is the uh, the nth approximations. So the n. Right.
So this is called SM, the S approximations. Uh, you can plug into uh, a general formula for SN, the S approximations. Okay. And in general, that is not easy to get this formula because you you are you depends on whether you have uh, this formula formula for this sum. Okay. So let's uh, stop here. Take a break for five minutes, and then we'll do some more computation for this uh, this uh, type of computations. Okay. So let's take a break.